In this video, I'm gonna be going through some live examples of some of the biggest mistakes that I see people make when they're drop shipping on Shopify. What's going on everybody, Tanner here with another video. Hope you're all having an amazing and productive day so far. So in just a few seconds here, we're gonna hop onto my computer and I'm gonna be showing you some of the biggest mistakes that I see people make when they are drop shipping on Shopify. Now these are common mistakes I see all the time, considering it only took me about 10 minutes to actually find stores on Shopify that are making these mistakes. So we're gonna walk through them, I'm gonna explain them and what not to do. And remember, if you have any other questions past this video or want help with your store, just go to the description and choose the best resource for you. Now here on this first store already, I'm already noticing one big issue. Now take a second before I scroll any further and let me know if you know what it is. And if you thought of the name of the store, you are correct. Because in theory, you know, the best price deals.com, you know, people want the best price, people want a deal, um, which is good, but you really should not have any word like shop or trending or price or deals, anything like that as the name of your store, especially in the domain, because it's gonna automatically devalue your store and the potential that it has. There's a way that you can angle this to benefit you, but in the long run, this really isn't gonna be able to get you the results that you want because it's not something that's truly brandable, if you wanna use that word. Now, what you can do, a better option than just coming up with a quick name like bestpricedeals.com, is to run ads through a Facebook page titled something along that line. So let's say, for example, you're selling watches. You know, you have a watch store and an actual watch name of your brand uh, here on the store. You know, you're gonna have a Facebook page about the best watches for under $100. You know, that could be the name of your uh, page. And then on that page, you can post about different watches that are best under $100 and they can all be about your products. So then when you're actually running ads through that Facebook page, the people that are seeing the ads are seeing the ad being run through a page about watches that are the best for under $100 and then it's just taking that potential customer to your website where you sell watches for under $100 and that's gonna be a lot more beneficial and brand building than just coming up with a quick name with trend or shop and just taking the easy way out. So think of something, it could literally be anything as your domain name. Just don't use deals, trends, or anything like that. So now when we scroll down on the store, we're gonna see another big issue that's really gonna affect your ability to make sales and even just consistently make sales as a drop shipping store. And if you notice what it is, I'm sure you have, is that the name of the products are exactly what it would be on AliExpress. So I would assume they imported these products through Oberlo and did not change a single thing. And the reality of it is that this is just gonna prove even further the assumption a potential customer might have had about this being a drop shipping store just based off the name to now actually being one. Because a simple thing you can do is just go ahead, copy this name, go to AliExpress, search it, and boom, look, it's already there, pretty much exactly the same. We go back to the website and you're gonna see right here. And then we check out the description of this store and we're gonna see it's exactly how an AliExpress description would be. So the second mistake is don't forget to change your product titles and descriptions. Now here on this next store is another big one I see that's pretty common where people think they're doing a great job of adding all these different scarcity tactics and pop-ups uh, to make their store better. But the reality of it is that you're gonna scare away a customer and you don't wanna give a customer a lot of options. You wanna minimize the options that you have because when you give them a lot of options, then it's just giving them more room to think and distract them from the initial reason of why they came onto your website, which is just buying the product or at least taking a look at you know what you had to offer. So first thing that happened when I came onto this website was, boom, pop-up, here for the email list, which you know can be good, but I usually don't have a pop-up come up like this unless the customer's on the store for over 30 seconds. Now this was instant. So you exit out of that, and now you're here on the store where you see all of these things going on. Now this isn't the worst case I've seen. This is just one that I figured would make a good example where they have all these different options here for the products. Now, what I would do instead of having all these different options is to go ahead and just make separate product pages and run separate ad creatives for this product and the different variants that you have. So instead of having all these options and all these different things blinking at me, I would keep this as simple as possible. You know, you already have free shipping up here, plus they have free shipping down here in the descriptions. So instead of having free shipping in the actual product name, then I would remove that leave that here. And then nowadays, you really don't need to be using the guaranteed safe checkout and all that stuff. It just looks more spammy and more like a drop shipping store than anything else nowadays. So if you're drop shipping on this store, you wanna keep it as simple as possible. You know, it says we ship from California, two to four days fast delivery. Uh, hopefully that's true what they're saying and that's good to have there. But it would look much, much more cleaner if they removed this guaranteed safe checkout, had the email pop up come up, 
about 30 seconds later and then had this either as all these things separated with no free shipping um, and the variant name or turning this into a drop down instead of uh, the different boxes where it just looks you know all clustered and not really clean so another thing i just noticed here was i started scrolling down the description and i got another pop-up of wait how does an extra 15 percent off sound so um this is just the way they have it set up their email pop-up through privy uh, which is the app they're using on here but what I would do instead of having it where you're scrolling, where they're just instantly trying to give you a discount code, you know, it sort of devalues yourself again because you're offering a discount just while I'm scrolling through the description, which shows that they're really, really, really trying to get this sale instead of allowing me to look at what the product is and how it works. So instead of doing that upon scroll, I would probably change that to an exit intent. And that's where a pop-up triggers when a customer goes to exit out of the tab. The description overall is not too bad as far as having some gifts here showing how it works. But again, no reviews. And we can go over how to build the perfect product page in a separate video. If you want to see that, just let me know in the comments and leave a like on this video. But let's go ahead into the next issue. So this one should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can see the name is Gucci on here. And you know, believe it or not, this is something a lot of people actually do is they start listing name brand things uh, from Chinese suppliers selling fake items. You don't want to be doing this. You don't want to be selling anything name brand. And the main reason I actually first uh, wanted to talk about this store before I even noticed they were selling fake designer stuff was that their banner here just looks like they pulled it off of Google Images. You know, if you want to use a banner and use some scarcity tactics, at least make your own creatives or make it a little bit smaller so it's more quality. But don't just rip something off of Google Images because I can pretty much tell this is not very high quality. It's all stretched out and it doesn't really relate to what the store actually is. So we scroll down here and you know we see all this Gucci stuff. I'm actually curious to how much this is USD. So if I did this correctly, they're selling this for roughly 175 USD, which is a lot of money, um, especially for a fake bag. I'm sure the real version of this is closer to a thousand or maybe even more than that. So I know it sounds like common knowledge, but stay away from selling anything name brand, whether it's Gucci, a high luxury brand like this, or something down to even like Skechers or New Balance, anything like that. And lastly, say I'm a US customer and I'm buying from here and I don't know what the conversion is from uh, the pounds on here to USD. Then for most potential customers, that might scare them away because they don't wanna go through the work and hassle of having to figure out what the actual price is when they can just go to another seller that has it listed in USD. So the simple solution to this is just to get an automatic currency converter that tracks when people come from a specific location onto the store. So the store would automatically detect, I'm from the United States, and it would change this to USD and then would allow me to go ahead, see that pricing and not have to worry about anything else. It would be like I didn't even see it in this other currency. Now use the mistakes that these people made with their Shopify dropshipping stores to your own benefit by not doing the same thing. Because doing these things is really what's gonna make or break your store when it comes to actually generating sales. So if you're like the first store and you don't even change the product name or description, then most likely you're not gonna make any sales. You're just gonna be spending money to push traffic and it's not really worth it. So to recap what we went over in this video, don't put shop trends or anything like that in your domain name. Make sure to change your titles and descriptions before you launch ads. Make sure not to overwhelm your customer with all kinds of pop-ups and different distractions. And fourth, don't sell any name brand stuff unless you're authorized to, and definitely don't sell any fake things. And five, if you're targeting different countries around the world, make sure that when that potential customer goes onto your store, your currency automatically changes to whatever their currency is in that location. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and remember if you need anything else past this video, just check the resources in the description and use what's best for you. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a big like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.